creation was first or thought of as first being in terms of things created and then in terms of doing and achieving but the real purpose is being states of being and you need a technology that handles that to be the I was going to say desired but found to be preferred outcome it's as if because we wanted utopia in some sense to cover all we applied our our creativity to the top downwards whereas it was found to be reliant upon the roots upwards the individual, not the whole, that needed attention, all individuals at once. But that if the individual is appropriately organized or or their state is appropriate, then the whole is achieved, obviously. The attention though needs to be at the individual. And in particular, the overall mastery must be written in each individual. Just like the cell has the complete blueprint of the body in every cell, the DNA. Well, I mean, I'm not sure how complete actually in terms of physical structure and so on, but the key seems to be there in the DNA of the individual cell that has some view written into it of the overall um, body. But the achievement of that view has to be in the individual, if you like, not in the state, not in the political state or economic or social structure but in the individual and then the structure takes care of itself it just just happens the vision has to be in the individual not in the rulers. The rulers always think they've got it. And they're amazed to find their victim not master of the situation that they're sitting on top of. You know, your your royalty and your your governments and your captains of industry and your elite are just amazed to find how powerless they are to achieve fulfillment, completeness, joy, peace, hope, love. They find 
they are destitute elite of individuals that have no cohesion with each other no affinity other than their dilemma their dilemma of well, it can only be described as spiritual poverty And I mean, I'm not claiming that their subjects under them are any the better. Some can be. But typically the majority are not. They too are impoverished by that inadequacy of the elites who have quite simply focused on the wrong goals. Non-spiritual goals, what we call worldly goals. Power and finance and uh, prestige, status. Which all turn out to be the most tremendous burden, of course. Because they don't bring the satisfaction that you want. So we look back into history and we find the spiritual greats of our history dwarf our achievements. It's in straight terms of Fulfillment, happiness, meaning to life. It's this is not a theory of devolution. It's it's not that you know the whole of ancient society was some wonderful utopia and it's devolved into this tragic state of um, material competence and spiritual incompetence a trade to achieve comprehensive inferiority. But it is the case that the answers seem to have been there from the beginning. If you like, there are always some people of astonishing wisdom and astonishing literature. Even, we find, astonishing technical achievements and understanding of things like astronomy and uh, architecture. There are things the ancients have done in stone that we've not a clue as to how they did it. Quite apart from why. <laughs> I mean, Popular conception is still that the pyramids were there to bury the, the pharaoh in. I notice that he's buried separately to the to the, the pyramid. I mean, we assess everything in really megalithic past as being associated with a variation on how to sacrifice people to the gods. <laughs> We haven't got a clue of their real purpose, except it's linked with astronomy. Mark these words of mine. Look, you, you take your, you know, your Hitlers and uh, Stalin and uh, Churchills from the twentieth century, um, Saddam Hussein. Uh, um, Anyone you care to mention, your royalty. Um, your billionaires. They're 
are not happy. They are not pictures of peace and joy and hope and love and kindness and being. Wonderfulness. They're a tragedy. You have to be mad to be pursuing such position. Given the great lack of happiness and joy in outcome that such give to those that achieve such position. I came from a well-off family that were murdering each other. I mean, not quite literally, but not far off at times. <laughs> Certainly they were threatening it. And, you know, I can remember we had a... a we had a sign out the front of the house that said tradesmen, which directed people who were not guests to go to the back door of the house. <laughs> God dear, we, I should have died. My mother, I think, we should have died with embarrassment to have had such a sign. But Dad put it there. And I heard someone some, some night, some joke, tradesmen? What bloody trade do you follow then? Duh. You know, he was casting away. He's probably drunk. I don't know. Anyway, it obviously had enough, poor chap. And I thought, if only you knew the thing that you're so, so jealous of, this apparent success and wealth, it's, it's so unhappy, so awful. I knew the reality, and he didn't, poor chap. I was a kiddie, of course, but of course I was heir to the estate. <laughs> I mean, in a small way, it was probably well, certainly one of the best houses in the town, but medium-sized, I don't know what it was, N thousand. Um, meant nothing, did it? My friend... Similarly, well, he was living in the house that Dad first owned with his first wife. And uh, he was the only child, and Mum and Dad idolised him. Got addicted to gambling. Died of suicide. Third friend, all oh, whizzing around in this uh, Cooper S, which was, wow, the envy of all the other youth in the town. Died of alcohol. By the grace of God, I missed my fortune. <laughs> And I do mean the grace of God. I knew that when I took mum's side in divorce proceedings, which they didn't succeed in getting, the judge was Catholic. <laughs> mum's counsel wasn't optimistic when they realised it was judge, I think his name was Rangman. Yeah. Good chap. <laughs> so I set aside the fortune. I felt God had, well, I didn't think in terms of God, but I felt I'd already been, I'd got enough, what do you call it, human investment in me to not, you know, I was already destined to go to university, you know, I mean, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't needing material wealth. did need to be loyal to mum, and I was. Probably a bit misplaced, but, well, youth makes mistakes, doesn't it? But in some fundamental sense, I got it right. I put loyalty before cash. Wow. <laughs> well done, Marsha. <laughs> mm. 
Uh, before you rush to do it, though, it does mean you end in poverty. Actually, I'm not in poverty, but I don't own my own house. I might just live on a state pension. I live in a very nice part of town. And it's very comfortable. God has rescued me.